Good evening. Tonight we are at Psalm 23, verse 4. Psalm 23, verse 4 says, Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. I'm going to pay attention to the second part where David says, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. What did David mean when he said, I will fear no evil? What kind of evil are we talking about? In this world, there are two kinds of evil. Firstly, the spiritual powers of darkness. For us as believers, as well as even people who are out there, these evil powers are very real. I've heard of a testimony from one of our church brothers who was testifying how one of his business competitor, who is a non-believer, who came to confess to him how some of the other friends actually were using different type of uh, spiritual power to try to deter him and try to cause business uh, failures and so on and so forth. So when we talk about evil, first and foremost, yes, there are spiritual powers that are involved. Then the second type of evil we are talking about are the different types of harm that you and I are faced with in our daily life. Physical harm, physical dangers, situations, accidents. All these are the evils that we are confronted with in this fallen world. So why we will fear no evil? As we begin to look into the Bible, and especially when we read verses like 1 John chapter 4, verse 4, the Bible tells us, Because greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. Now this is a very powerful promise. Our God whom we serve is the creator of the heavens and the earth. There's nobody else above him. He has conquered death. And that is the most important thing. And one of the greatest enemy that mankind will face, and that is death. And Jesus our Lord conquered death. He was risen from the dead. There is no one who can be as powerful as he who has done it, and he indeed is the creator. So that's why greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. And therefore, we will fear no evil. The Bible also tells us in Romans chapter 8, verse 31, if God is for us, who can be against us? What wonderful promises from God's word. I will not fear evil. Now again, pay attention to the word, I will not. This is a choice. When we say, I will or I will not, it's a decision. It's a choice that we make. Now how many of us realize that discouragement can also be a choice? it can become a pattern of how we respond to things. Now, some of us get discouraged easily. The reason is because we have a tendency to look at the negative, discouraging things. And we have a tendency to entertain discouraging thoughts. We are choosing to look at the negatives. We are choosing not to look at Christ and all the positive things. Now, how can we help ourselves that we will not be so easily discouraged? And the answer is by learning, by learning to discipline our mind not to focus on the problem, but instead to focus on God's power. That's how we do it. And this is a fact. Because as you begin to look around in society, 
you take two person and put them in an identical situation. It could be a chaos, it could be a tragedy, it could be a crisis. One of them definitely will be blown away by that crisis. Whereas the other may respond with calmness and sometimes even be strengthened by that situation. One of them will fall apart, whereas the other, as I mentioned, can be strengthened through it. Now, the difference is what we are focusing on. We need to focus not on our circumstances, but on Christ. Not on the situation, but on the Saviour. Not on our problem, but on God's power. Colossians 1.11 says, God will strengthen you with His own great power so that you will not give up when troubles come, but you will be patient. And this is so important because our human energy will run out. After a trial, for a certain length of time, you don't have energy. Some of you perhaps may be facing it right now. You are already feeling so lethargic, especially mentally, emotionally, and subsequently, physically. No stamina. Human endurance has a limit. It runs out. In the valleys of life, you and I need a power that is bigger than ourselves. And that is why we need to tap upon our God who made that promise. Now David also said, For you are with me. God not only promises us His power in the valley, He promises His presence. You will never go through a valley in your life by yourself. Because God has said, I will be with you. Isaiah 43 verse 2, a beautiful verse. When you go through deep waters and great trouble, I will be with you. When you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. When you walk through the fires of oppression, you will not be burned up. The flames will not consume you. Now, take a moment to take notice of this very important truth. God did not promise that He will deliver us from every situation. Bear that in mind. But what He promised is that He will be with us in every situation. Of course, we may ask, why doesn't God deliver us from every situation? The reason, as far as I can find from the Word of God, is that there are divine purposes that God wants to fulfill and also for the purpose that God allow us to go through the valleys of life so that our faith can be trained, so that our character can be molded, that we may be more like Jesus. David also reminded himself that God's rod and staff comfort him. The rod and the staff are two basic tools that the shepherd carries whenever he's out there with the sheep. The rod and the staff actually serve its purposes. How do the rod look like and how does the staff look like? You will be able to see from the picture. A rod was basically about maybe two feet long and uh, shepherds are very skilled at sometimes hurling the rod like a missile at anything, wolves and wild animals that may be attacking the sheep. And when David says his rod, his rod, it means that God is there to protect us. When we go through the valley where there are dangers, God defends us, God protects us. When you're going through the valley, God doesn't look from heaven unconcerned. He is with us. His rod is there to protect us. Your staff comforts me. The staff is a longer stick. And 
The shepherd uses a staff to guide and comfort. He will use the staff to draw the sheep closer to him. He will use the staff to lift up that sheep that may be down and out. He brings them close to himself. He also uses the staff to guide the sheep even as they walk through the path or especially the valley. So, my brothers and sisters, when you go through the valley, you are not going through it alone. God is going to guide you by using His rod and His staff so that you may be protected and so that you may be guided. Finally, David says in the earlier verse of uh, chapter 23, verse 4, when I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Now, allow me to bring you back to that statement which uh, is also very important for us to consider one or two other facts here. Uh, as a matter of fact, there are three important things about shadows that I discovered very interestingly. Shadows are always bigger than the reality. Give it a thought, isn't it so? Shadows are always bigger than the real thing. And likewise, fear is always greater than the actual problem. It's the fear that is enormous. The real thing may not be that enormous. Imagine David and Goliath. It's the fear that causes the soldiers to back down. But in reality, that Goliath has his weakness. Secondly, shadows cannot hurt you. Anyone have been run over by a shadow? All of us know there's a difference between the shadow of a truck and the truck itself, isn't it? Shadows are image without substance. They cannot hurt you. Yes, they can scare you, but they cannot hurt you. They are just shadows. The third thing about shadows is that there is no shadow without a light somewhere. If all is dark, there is no shadow. So there is a shadow when there is a light somewhere. So when you are going through a dark valley, you think that the sun has stopped shining. That, that is at least our initial perception. And sometimes we think that when we go through the valley of the shadow of death, God is nowhere. I am alone. God has abandoned me and all kinds of thoughts will come and bombard your mind. You can't see it all and you think you are in total darkness. But remember, anytime there is a shadow, there is a light somewhere. And when you start to get afraid of the shadow in the dark valleys of life, turn your back on the shadow and look directly at the light and the shadow will fall behind you. When you are afraid, don't look at the shadow. Turn in the exact opposite direction and look at the light and the shadow will fall behind you. Now, what do I mean by this? Jesus said, I am the light of the world. When you look at him, you will not be afraid of all the other shadows that are around you. It will fall behind you. If you look at the world, you'll be distressed. If you look within you, you'll be depressed. If you look at Christ, you will be at rest. Like the song that says, Turn your eyes upon Jesus. Look full in His wonderful face and the things of the earth will grow strangely dim in the light of His glory and grace. My brothers and sisters, believers go through valleys just like anybody else. But there's a big difference between we and those who have yet to believe in the Lord. The difference is that while we may face the shadows, but we have the Good Shepherd, the presence of the Good Shepherd, 
that is always there to guide us and to protect us. So once again, may these words resonate in your heart where David says, I will not be afraid for you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. Let's pray together. Hallelujah. We give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. Father, we thank you for your word. Your word indeed is the lamp to our feet, the light to our path. Your word is the living sword that will be able to minister to our soul and spirit and to the thoughts and intents of our hearts. I pray God that let your word penetrate through every single situation, particularly where there are shadows in our life where there are darkness in our life, whether it be in the business or in the job or in the family or in our health. I pray by the authority of the name of Jesus that you will dispel away all of this evil, that in Jesus' name, greater is He that is in us than He that is in the world. Lord, your word says, if God is for us, who can be against us? So I speak forth your power. I speak forth your healing touch. I speak forth your answers and solutions. I declare your promises unto your people, Lord, that by your word, we will once again be rejuvenated and we will be lifted up in our faith and to continue in this journey of faith and you will give your people the victory. Bless them with a good night rest as I ask this in Jesus' precious name. Amen and amen. And I pray that you are being blessed by God's word. Good night.